Good morning. A few years ago, I lived in a beautiful arts and crafts bungalow that my partner at the time and I were lovingly restoring and that was going to be our retirement security, uh, our financial security, you know, for the golden years. Well, <clears throat> it worked out well for him and <laughs> not at all for me, hence the legal uh, embroglio that I'm uh, currently uh, struggling with, but I have confidence that justice will prevail regardless. We did a major reno on the upstairs and took out the chimney and put in a heat pump, <coughs> but that left a ton of really nice, you know, century old brick. And so I thought it would be cool to put a retaining wall down the entire length of the house on the driveway and then put in raised beds of daylilies and stuff. I was collecting daylilies at the time. I had like 161 varieties at the peak of my madness. And so, <clears throat> since I had some friends uh, that I had uh, met and had uh, helped out pastorally at a local Mexican restaurant, one of the waiters was also a stonemason. And he gave me his card and I had kept it. And so I gave him a shout and I said, hey, I have a project for you. Come and see what, you know, what I'm talking about. And so he did. <clears throat> his name was Miguel, the second Michael in the story. And he took a look at it, looked at the bricks and said, well, we're going to need more bricks, but I have a source for um, odd lots of bricks that are left over from other people's construction projects. Let me see what I can do. Long story short, he finds enough bricks to do this 65 foot three and a half foot high, double thickness brick wall all the way down from my garage to the public sidewalk. And knowing that I'm a priest, he has a plan. He's going to make an arch and he's going to have three crosses uh, as part of the design in the brickwork. And he's even going to take a piece of limestone that I had brought back from the lake shore where I had grown up. <clears throat> he was going to put that as the centerpiece of the principal cross, like a Eucharistic symbol of communion, the wafer. It was spectacular. The idea and the actual <clears throat> execution was terrific. But here is the, <laughs> here is the wrinkle in the story. <laughs> so, so they show up, three men and a teenage boy. And I went out there to hook them up with some lemonade <clears throat> and found out that they were all named Michael. Miguel, 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 and Michael was the young boy. And, and I'm a Michael. So, like, you couldn't have written a better foundation for an SNL skit and to have five Michaels working on a project. And I'm just wondering how in the hell is this gonna, is this all gonna work out? This is like a lot of Michaels in one place. So here's what I observed. There are basically two very simple tools needed to make a brick retaining wall. First of all, you have to have a plum, which is strangely not related to uh, fruit at all. It's basically a pointed lead weight on a string. And so you have to determine that in fact, 
the wall is going to be perfectly vertical. That's the first thing. The second tool is a level. That's that little thing that looks, I don't know, kind of like a ruler, but it has a little, uh, a little vial of antifreeze in the middle. And it tells you if your, your rows are actually completely, perfectly horizontal. Now, mind you, before I hired these guys, I had this fantasy in my head <clears throat> that I was going to go get some concrete mix and just slapdash some kind of a wall up myself. And I would never have thought to get a plum or a level for any of it. I was just going to like eyeball it. That would have fallen down <laughs> for sure. So I'm observing all of this. And things are going really well. But I've got a vacation coming up. My sister is, is taking us to Ocean City, Maryland. And so I arrange, I leave my phone number. I said, look, everything is good. The dogs are, are being cared for by other people. Here's my number. I'm sure it'll be all fine. And I'm on the beach a few days later, listening to the surf, soaking up the sun in my, you know, <laughs> in my most peaceful, relaxed state of mind. And there's a text message. And it's from, of course, one of the Miguels. <laughs> and he says, hey, we hit a gas line but we put dirt over it and we went to lunch, but it's gonna be okay. To which I replied, and by the way, this was in broken English. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to f figure it out. And so I'm like, wait, what? You hit a gas line, where? Well, turns out that the gas line, which is, you know, by code now, <clears throat> It's supposed to be 28 inches below, below grade, right? Well, this house was built in 1929. The guy who built the house, who's one of the famous builders of, of Fort Wayne, probably put his own damn gas line in back in the 20s. And so it's only five inches below the grass. And so here they were, <clears throat> working away. They had the vertical thing figured out with the plump. They had the horizontal thing all figured out with the level. But what they weren't counting on was unexpected things below the surface. Long story short, the neighbor lady smelled gas while they were having their, uh, <laughs> their siesta and called utility service who came over and shut the gas off. And so here I am trying to relax on the beach, wondering if my house is gonna blow up. And I you know, had to come back and do all the rigmarole, get the inspection to make sure it really was you know, safely repaired and all of that. This is what happens when you have too many Dan Michaels on a project. It's, it's just overkill. But it's also, I think, a decent image for how we should approach living this life. Those of us who are trying to live our religion, and we all have a religion, by the way. We do. Religion, sociologically speaking, is simply a framework of our ultimate values, the things we believe in the most. And our spirituality then are the things that we do to honor and nurture those values. So we've got the vertical thing figured out in this life. We've got an idea that there are some ideals and some ideas 
bigger than our little old selves, whether it's God or abstractions like liberty, justice for all human beings. We got that piece, right? That's the vertical plumb piece. The horizontal piece <clears throat> relates to our connections with other human beings. It's what we're doing in this real life world. How are we supporting other people? How are we building relationships that are strong and nurturing and life-giving and all of those things? So that's the horizontal piece. But there's also underlying all of that is a connection to the Spirit of God, whether we recognize it as that or not. Just like the murder of Michaels working on my retaining wall encountered something completely unexpected as they were working the driveway of life, the same is true for you and me. Shit happens. We're going to lose people that we love. Jobs that we thought we would work, you know, till retirement, companies go bankrupt. Companies have a reduction in force. Relationships that we thought were going to be life-giving and, and sustaining for all of our life suddenly are not. So we have to be prepared for the unknowns, the things lying beneath the surface of this life that sometimes pop up like a ruptured gas line in the front lawn and scare the hell out of us. That's where the spirituality piece of our lives really, it's the, where the rubber hits the road. It's the practical aspect. In 1 John, we read that God is love and that every one of us who loves is of God because God is love. It's a reading that most of my uh, same-sex couples choose for their wedding ceremony at church. <clears throat> Galatians gives us another reminder. Chapter 5, verse 25. If we say we're living by the Spirit, which we do when we are practicing our spirituality, then let's be guided by the Spirit too. Let's not just say it. Let's be aware of things around us above us and below us and ahead of us. And when those unforeseen things take us by surprise and threaten us, at least we are able to take a breath and choose to trust as best we can. It's progress, baby, not perfection. Let's pray. Blessed and blessing God, we open our hearts to your divine healing presence today at the end of another work week. Thank you for the many ways that you have given us a spiritual plumb and level in this life to help us stay in right relationship with you and with all of our sisters and brothers. Thank you for that still speaking small voice within that comes to us in our moments of quiet reminding us that we are always in communion with you. 
help us today in a special way to check our alignment vertically and horizontally. And for those of us who have just hit a gas line unexpectedly, who are struggling with regret or shame, lift us up today. And as we inhale deeply, your Holy Spirit fill us with her grace and healing and power. We ask all this in the name of your only begotten, the Christ, now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed Friday. Look out for a gaggle or a murder of Michael's.